I just recorded this entire video without clicking the record button. What's up? Welcome back. It has been a minute since I've made my last settings video. If we're talking specifics, it has been 173 days since I've made my last settings video and I get comments daily about my settings, so I figured I'd make a new one. Before I hop into my game, if this video helps you with your settings or you find yourself enjoying this video, then please don't forget to drop a like on this video. It helps out the channel a ton. Also, I play controller and I'm kind of decent. I guess so if you like that type of stuff then feel free to click that subscribe button now we go to Fortnite and we're on take two and of course my ping spikes up to around 50 instead of the 20 to 30 that it was just on but if you did not know I do play with the strike pack that FPS Dominator strike pack essentially it just adds two paddles to the back of the controller plus I play with the galaxy control freaks so that's all that I've added to my controller and I like to think I'm a decent player but right now on 40 50 ping it's not looking that way I'll just go ahead and throw in a little clip so you guys know that I'm not the worst of players I like to think of myself as a pretty decent player but when I'm on higher ping, it's hard to do anything. So let's head into the settings. We're going to go ahead and move that face cam so you guys can see the actual settings. If you haven't yet realized, I do play on PC. I play controller on PC. So these are kind of all my video and display and graphic settings for my PC. I don't think consoles or mobile have most of these. Mostly they're just for PCs. So if you are interested in any of this, everything is kind of low or off just so I can get the best frames possible, especially while I'm streaming or recording. Now moving into the first section of settings, I do play NAE servers if you're curious, but look at this. I have 56 ping to east. I only have 59 ping to west. <laughs> That's called being central and it sucks. For my movement, uh, the only thing I have on over here is sprint by default. That's a huge thing that I turned on like a year or so ago. If you don't yet use this, I highly suggest it. For the combat, I don't really think any of this is important. I don't know if you guys have this turned off or not, but it's definitely a good thing to have turned on. And then turbo building obviously has <laughs> should be on. I do use confirm edit on release. That's something I switched to probably about six or so months ago. And it's definitely very helpful. It's made me get a lot better at the game. If you invert your view, you might be a psycho. You should probably go get checked out, just saying. And then the rest are just random settings. Over to the game UI, all the HUD options. HUD scales on 80%, makes it a little smaller, it looks more clean in my opinion. Everything else I have turned on except for creative runtime performance stats. Uh, most of the stuff you're gonna want on it's all your like weapon slots and health and reticle all that stuff you probably need. Mouse and keyboard settings I'm trash at mouse and keyboard. Okay, whatever, I'm bad. So you probably don't care about these mouse and keyboard settings, but basically I just copied all of Benji Fishy's settings and that's kind of what I've been using, what I've been trying to learn. As you just saw, it's not going very well. Don't mind the change of clothes and the change of daylight in my window, it is a new day. But let's move on uh, to the first set of kind of controller options. So in this tab, I do obviously have advanced options turned on. If you don't have these turned on at this point in the game, you're probably gonna be falling behind. Using advanced options just allows you to fine tune stuff and fully optimize your settings to be the best you can be. So starting off from the top, uh, I don't use auto run. I don't like it. I just click my keyboard and mouse bind if I wanna use auto run. Build immediately, have on vibrations. I've never liked vibrations. I have those off. Edit hold time doesn't matter if you just have a single edit bind like I do. Build mode sensitivity multiplier and edit mode sensitivity multiplier. These change probably probably once every few months because as I start getting better and better on my new sensitivity it starts feeling slower and slower and I feel like I can control it more and do more with it so every few months probably I just move it up by 0.1 so my build mode is 1.3 my edit mode is 1.4 from what I've heard it's good to keep your edit mode sensitivity 0.1 higher than your build mode maybe that's not true but that's what I do so my look horizontal speed is gonna be 49% 
percent look vertical speed 60 percent it's important to have vertical speed about 10 percent or so higher so you're able to flick up and get those headshots and do that extra damage because you don't necessarily need to move side to side very quickly but moving up and down getting all the way from someone's feet all the way up to their head for that headshot can take a little while if you're on a lower vertical speed sensitivity so i just stick at about 50 horizontal and 60 vertical then the rest of these are just the default settings if they're at the green lines and that means that's the default so i haven't messed with any of those as for my ads sensitivity the vertical speed and horizontal speed has the same thing going where the vertical speed's 10 percent higher so my look horizontal speed is going to be 18 percent my look vertical speed is going to be 27 percent even after this pretty hard aim assist nerf for controller on pc uh, I'm still able to hit my shots and aim pretty well with this sensitivity. Then these next four settings are all the default. As you can see, they're just at the green bars. I do still play on linear. I have seen since this last controller nerf that some people are switching to exponential and seeing good results out of that. And I'm kind of curious to see what it feels like. So if you guys would like to see a video of me going on that, testing it, comparing the two, and kind of giving my input, then feel free to drop a comment and let me know know that and then along with that I obviously have aim assist strength on 100% but like I said there was just recently probably a week or two ago a pretty strong controller on PC aim assist nerf basically what I've heard this last nerf did is move the aim assist strength down by 33% essentially after the update now we're on a hundred percent but if this slider bar was from before the update before this last controller aim assist nerf update it's just for controller on pc not console or any of that but before that update the 100 percent now is equivalent to 66 percent aim assist then so our aim assist now is basically like two weeks ago if you were running around playing on 66 percent aim assist so i definitely did notice some change in the first week or so of playing that update but i think i'm just now starting to get used to it again starting to get my aim back and starting to feel good as for my dead zones i leave them on 10 percent each i definitely recommend a lower setting compared to a higher setting a higher setting is gonna make it feel like you have more input delay so i would say 10 percent is a pretty good spot if anything you could even go lower than that in this last category is about the foot controller i heard a long time ago that if you turn the foot controller on and set both the dead zone and max throttle to one percent then that decreases your input delay for your controller so you can try that if you'd really like to but let's move on audio i doubt most people care about this i think the only important stuff is I do play with sound quality on low. I honestly don't recognize the difference between low and high. Makes my game run better as well, so I keep it on low. 3D headphones, I've never liked this setting. I just think it sounds really weird in my headphones and I prefer that to be off. And visualized sound effects, I don't use. I think they look pretty ugly, so I don't enjoy using those. Once again, I'm not very good on keyboard and mouse, so I doubt anyone cares about keyboard and mouse settings, but if you do, just look up Ben fishy's binds i you literally use every single one of his binds now we're into the controller binds and like i said before i do use the paddles and i use purple galaxy control freaks so for my binds i don't mess with the l2 r2 any of that stuff my d-pads all the same i use an l3 crouch in repair my touchpad is still my map my pickaxe is still triangle reload and interact is on square that's all pretty standard but my circle is edit and my x is jump but those are actually what my two paddles are set to so i never actually click those buttons if i want to jump then I click my left paddle if I want to edit then I click my right paddle and that leaves switch mode being on R3 now my build controls don't really change much it's still crouch on left stick it's still all that and for my edit controls I reset with R3, which I think is the standard, but I confirm with L3. Like I said before, I do have confirm edit on release on. So the only time I actually need to click L3 is when I'm resetting stuff. Not too long ago, I still had confirm on my circle button or my right paddle, but I decided to give L3 a try. And that along with practicing resets a ton has increased my reset speed a ton. My resets are now now pretty good for controlling. 
and being able to reset stuff quickly on controller is just kind of fun and it's nice to be able to reset stuff quickly on controller because if you're on keyboard and mouse all you have to do is use the little scroll wheel option so being able to compete with that is pretty nice and that's gonna go ahead and be the end of this one as always drop a like if you did enjoy subscribe if you are new I'm trying to get to that 10,000 subscriber mark that's gonna be awesome and drop any questions for me that you have down in the comments below thanks for watching